a tale that some of you have heard that was following me around so persistently that I put it in its kennel for two years. <laughs> but I really felt like I needed to bring it out to run around tonight. <laughs> At the back of the north wind, there lives a people so tall and strong who ride horses who are massive and frightening and have tails like war flags. The greatest of all of these people was their great King Antaeus. And he and his people bent their knees to no one and only worshipped three things, valor, honor, and freedom. Well, one fine spring, King Antaeus saw riding among the spears a young maiden. He looked at her. She looked at him. <laughs> and at the turn of the year, a little girl was born to them. A beautiful, quick, and cunning little girl. And they gave her a strong name. They called her Lexandra. And Lexandra grew. And when it came time for her to go amongst the horse herd, for the choosing of your hearthmate and your battle companion. She looked about her, and there was a bay filly with a thousand devils in her eye. <laughs> she looked at the filly. The filly looked at her. And after that, one didn't think of one without the other. The folk would ask her mother, where's Alexandra? And Alexandra would say, I'm not sure, but if she and the filly don't kill each other, they'll be home for supper. <laughs> <laughs> and home for supper they came, and there would be Alexandra every night, playing quick and cunning games with the trick of the smoke and the light and the fire to tell stories on the wall. And then that spring, hate came to the Great Plains. The Persian horde came down. Did they want their gold? No. Did they even want their fine stallions? No. They wanted to drive that proud people to their knees. And so Antaeus mustered his troops, called his daughter and looked at her. And she only came up to just below his sword belt. And with tears in his eyes, he said, Lexandra, you cannot ride in the Vaughn, for you would be the chink in our armor. And Lexandra wept. But she looked at her father, and she said, Father, I am the daughter of a soldier. I will do what's needed. And do it she did. She bore water. She helped the wounded. And as night fell, it looked as if the people of the plains had turned the tide. But then the howling started, and the fiery arrows came flooding across the plain and onto the people, and sheets of flame rose up. And Alexandra was pulling the wounded out of the way, and then she noticed that the fire did not go where the fire had been before, that there was safety in those great blackened pieces of the plain. And so she cried to her people, come back, come back. Come to these circles, you'll be safe. And safe they were. But they knew that safety was not going to last the night. And so Antaeus mustered his troops again. And they on their great horses stood as he tenderly kissed his wife on the cheek, who was by his side. And he raised his arm to signal that final charge. And just then, there was disarray amongst the Persians. The troops were howling in fear. And they all looked up, and there, 100 leagues long and 100 leagues high, was a great shadowed horseman with a bow drawn towards the Persians on a mighty steed with a tail like a war flag. And the steed would prance, and the apparition, back and forth,
was there to frighten the Persians. And frightened them, it did. And they fled. And just as the gray light before dawn broke, one last Persian turned and hurled one last spear at that apparition, and it crumbled. And in the first light of morning, the people saw Alexander and the Philly pierced with one spear. And there was silence on the plain. There was not one man or woman who would not have changed places to have her back with her thousand devils. But just as despair was the deepest, a mighty war cry struck up, and there was Alexandra, 100 leagues long and 100 leagues high, leaping the rising sun with a filly to take her place in the stars, where she guards those who worship freedom and honor and valor to this day.